Yeah, yeah, sure, I could have gone to the re-release of Casablanca last night, but hello, a special screening for the new Roland Emmerich movie? <laughs> Did Casablanca start out with astronauts in space listening to Toto and debating the lyrics to Africa? I think not. This movie opens like Roland Emmerich directed Gravity. We're sure there's a tragedy in space, but oh, this time, it's caused by a volcanic gas explosion from the moon in which astronaut Patrick Wilson is then fired for this, and a massive cover-up happens. That seems like it'd be a hard thing to cover up, but pff, none of my business. I love how the Patrick Wilson character is now like a washed-up has-been who spends his days drinking and making public appearances at space conventions while stewing about his mortal enemy Michael Pena who runs a car dealership. Why is this Cobra Kai only if the moon fell on them? But all of the stuff like moon explosions, Patrick Wilson fixing cars, and of course the conspiracy theory character, which there's one in every Roland Emmerich movie, only he's like a 90s conspiracy theorist who has an ancient PC and articles from the weekly world news pinned up on his wall. None of that will prepare you for how truly insane this movie gets. This is the most batshit movie Emmerich has ever made, and I loved every second of it for that reason. Oh, I was glad I was there. I went into this thinking, oh, it'll just be another disaster movie, where this time the moon is falling and cities are being destroyed. I was not prepared for 20 minutes into the thing, and the moon springs AI tentacles, which wipe out a shuttle full of astronauts like it's a planet-sized Doc Ock. Yeah, sure, it's got all of the stock disaster movie lines you can think of. A lot of the dialogue feels like an old computer that just generated lines for this type of movie. You've got things like, Mommy, are we gonna die? The sand in the hourglass is running out. I'm not gonna turn the key, my ex-wife is up there! If Earth gets a second chance, why not us? I can't go to space, what about my crippling IBS? Don't you worry about that, now suit up! I'm gonna get you the hell off of this moon! And don't forget the exposition dialogue where one character is an exchange student, and you know this because she starts her sentence with, well, as an exchange student. There's a lot of, so what you're telling me is, type of lines, mixed in with marvelous things like, huh, I don't know if moon gravity can do this. Damn it, what have I been telling you? The moon may have been created by aliens. Yes, yes, there's still family drama in this. We can't have a disaster movie without that. And this is introduced by Patrick Wilson watching a high-speed car chase on TV with police. And his wife calls and he's like, what? It's just some idiot getting arrested. And she goes, that idiot is your son! I mean, they do put some of the lines in the trailer. No, we are just inside the moon. That might be the greatest sentence anyone's ever said. Um, no, an even greater sentence in this movie may be, this must be how the moon stabilizes, some kind of gyroscopic device. Just when I think I've seen everything in this, you'll have a character who looks like they're inside of the Matrix, and someone goes, you are truly part of the moon now. And this scene involves a cat named Fuzz Aldrin. Oh, Fuzz Aldrin is one of the unsung heroes in the film. The conspiracy theorist finds an important article that he needs, and it was on one of the newspapers the cat pees on. So he looks at it, covered in urine, and is like, My God, Fuzz Aldrin, you're a genius! I may have known I was truly in love with this, when the gravity tidal waves are quickly approaching the shuttle during launch, and they go, oh shit, we gotta get out of here fast, and they start it up like it's a car, and they're driving away from Jason Voorhees. Yes, the shuttle is dodging floating tidal waves, and even drives through them. The shuttle, by the way, which they had to get out of storage, and it's covered in graffiti that says, Fuck the moon. <laughs> yeah, stupid moon, you piece of shit. I love that the moon is like a killer in this. There's part where the moon sneaks up on people. They'll be doing something in space, and the moon just peeks around the Earth all sinister-like, and dude goes, Oh shit, we gotta hurry up, you guys. I think the underreactions are my favorite part. One guy is smoking weed and watching the tsunamis on TV, then looks down and sees a pool of water around his feet and goes, <laughs> weird, and looks out the door and sees ships and tidal waves coming towards him. 
Other characters just watch comets take out whole mountaintops, and they're looking at it like they just saw a fender bender. Huh, best keep moving. And then this happens again, and the reaction is, hmm. <laughs> anyway, so how's your dad? It doesn't matter if you're on Earth or in space, you're gonna get some crazy shit either way. In space, it may be Armageddon, which suddenly turns into the Eternals by way of Elysium. And then on the ground, you'll have a car chase and a shootout with scavengers as they're driving away from the moon gravity that is lifting up whole buildings, and the car uses floating pieces of bridges as ramps. Gravity is picky in this movie. One girl is able to lift a whole tree off of a man as they run away from the moon gravity, flinging whole battleships at them, and then they jump a gap in the road with their new floating power. Hell yes. Hell yes to everything in this. I don't care. I like this movie way better than Don't Look Up. Yeah, sure, Don't Look Up is technically the smarter movie, I guess. But whatever, this movie has the beer and is throwing a raging kegger. I'm hanging out with this movie. I'm gonna give this an A. Does it deserve it? Well, the dialogue is bad. There's very questionable green screen. Mountaintops really don't seem that cold in it. But this grade is just for me. It finally answers the question of what if Roland Emmerich directed 2001, Contact, and Moon? And by God, that question needed to be answered. This movie is essential cinema. This movie wears its stupid on its sleeve, it's not embarrassed by it, it is what it is, it doesn't wink at the camera, and it knows it's the kind of movie where AI moon alien tentacles are banging at a moon base door, trying to break in as if it's a slasher film. Thanks for watching and going on this magical ride with me. Subscribe to our channel today and check out our reviews for The Hills Have Eyes and The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. Okay, I think I got it again. <laughs> See you next time.